Hello, my friend, and welcome to Positive Church. In the Bible, it says, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. Galatians 6, verse 10. Now, you come to watch this, maybe with a feeling that your problems are so big that you are going to need a miracle from God that the mountain of your problems is so huge that you just don't know how to climb it alone. When that happens, you need someone to believe with you in God's power. And you need to connect with a greater power than yourself. Well, my friend, you have found that right here. In the beginning, there were only 13 original Christians. In all the world, 13 people who knew that they were connected with a higher power of God. Those 13 changed the entire world to the way that it is today. These men, as you know, were ordinary men. They were exactly like me, exactly like you, except perhaps... They had even more doubts and even more failings than you or I have ever dreamed of having. But they were unordinary in one major way. They had an awareness in their human mind of godly power that was with them. The most powerful thing that we can have as human beings is the knowledge of our connection with God. Richard Bach said this in his book, Illusions. You were never given a wish without the power to make it come true. Think about that. And think about your wishes and your dreams. And the way that you would have dreamed that your life would be. Well, my friend, you have the power inside of you to make it come true. You have the power of God with you to make anything in your life become a reality. You are watching this by divine appointment. You are more than just human thoughts. You're more than just flesh and blood and what you can see with your human eyes when you look into the mirror. You are here to believe in the unseen power of God that is with you that is more powerful than anything that is seen with the human eyes or believed in human mind. A couple returned from Bangkok and they brought a newspaper with them. The headline on the newspaper said, The king is on the throne. And he says, Don't worry, be happy. I think a simple thing like that would be the message that Jesus would say in today's language. Be happy. Don't worry about your worries because God is with you. You are not alone. There is a power with you and you can meet with God any time. Can you imagine the result if we realize the temple of God The true church, the true cathedral is with us every moment. The altar, the meeting point where we can meet God, a a power that knows how to guide us, a power that knows how to heal us, a power that knows how to give us ideas to guide us through this maze of life is not years away from today, but is right with you now. I want to share a story with you that you'll find fascinating. This is Matthew 17, verses 1 through 6. It is the story of the transfiguration. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. Whenever the Bible talks about being led up, Uh, onto a high mountain, it is talking about something 
in addition that is happening in you. In prayer and in meditation, you are being led up onto a high mountain. If you go up this high mountain, here is what is actually occurring. You are going, my friend, from third dimensional human mind to the fourth dimensional mind of God. You are finding that there is going to be a transfiguration, and it's going to be in you. You no longer have worry because that experience only comes from the bottom of the mountain. It is a lower human brain activity. You are not going to have anxiety because you're going up into higher spiritual awareness. And in this spiritual place, this rarefied atmosphere, worry, anxiety, and problems of your daily life cannot survive. You are up on high with the presence of the living God. Listen to this. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. And then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was yet speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell on the ground. They were overcome by fear. Oh, sometimes that is the way we regard God. And the way some have regarded God since the beginning of Christianity. Many times we become fearful of God and we think that God is something to be feared. We think that it's God's will that we suffer. It's God's will that bad things come into our lives. Even insurance companies mention an act of God is something to be feared. But God never brought anything bad into our lives. God only brings good. And when God speaks to you in the silence of prayer from a bright cloud inside of you, it will always be positive. It will always say, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. And God will always affirm you in a positive way. It will always tell you the possibilities. You may pray and you may ask, Is this really the voice of God? How do I know what is the voice of God? Well, I ask you, what did it say to you? Did it tell you about the goodness that is in you? Or did it tell you about worry? Did it tell you about the possibilities or did it tell you again about the problems? And then you know what voice you are listening to. If the voice speaks to you in more positive terms than your own human thinking, it is God. If it's less positive, it is the lower human brain talking to itself again. The Bible says, But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. It's interesting, in one version of this story, in one version of the Bible, Luke 9, 28, it says that the disciples were overcome with sleep. Well, we too are overcome with sleep many times. And in our sleep, we go through our day-to-day -day existence sort of sleepwalking. Many of us, in our sleep, are having nightmares. In our daydreams, we're sometimes dwelling in the tape recorder of the mind, replaying it constantly about the bad things that we think are going to happen to us in the future.
or that happened in the past. It is a lie, my friend. It is a lie because God is with you. It is a lie because you do not have to believe that. It is false. You can go higher in mind. You can go up on the mountaintop inside of you and ask for God's help. True prayer is thinking what you should think and feeling what you should feel. I believe that when we pray, God pays closer attention to what we are feeling than what we're saying. Allow me to give you a case for that right now. I'm going to turn to Matthew 5, 21 through 26. First of all, Jesus paraphrases the Old Testament. You have heard it said to those of ancient time, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall not shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, if you are angry with a brother or a sister, you shall be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you shall be liable to the hell of fire. Now Jesus talks about hell in the Bible. But I ask you to turn in your Bibles to the footnote at the bottom of most of the pages where it mentions hell. The footnote says the original word was Gehenna. Gehenna was the trash dump outside of Jerusalem. Oh, it had eternal fires that burned for some 800 years. This is saying, look, either raise your thinkings about other people inside of yourself or you're no better than to be in the trash dump of your consciousness. Now, our consciousness may already be in a trash dump if it is in lower human brain. And then he goes on. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled with your brother or your sister and then come and offer your gift. This is saying to clean up your thinking inside of yourself. It is saying to not be disagreeable against another person. It is saying to hold love in your thinking and feelings about others. If you want to connect with love, you must be love. Imagine an automobile transmission that didn't have matching gears. You too have to have matching gears. You have to be in sync with God. If you come to God with all this anxiety and worry and hatred against another or yourself, you're out of sync and you can't connect in the true way that will spiritually change your life. Listen to the rest of this teaching. It says something very mysterious. It says, come to terms quickly with your adversary while you are on your way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. These are tough teachings for us. But it's not talking about an outside prison in a certain locale. It's talking about an inner prison. The adversary in our life is not necessarily bad. It is that person in our life that causes us some difficulty. It doesn't mean that he or she is right or wrong. The person we love most in the world may be our adversary. Some of our most prized things could cause the most difficulty for us. Our adversary is not necessarily wrong. Here is part number two of the mystery teachings of Jesus. 
We're talking here about a reaction inside of ourselves where we have most reactions. When someone does us wrong, when a company does us wrong, how do we react inside of our minds? The big question is, do we become disagreeable? Do we dwell on the points of disagreement in our mind? And the more we dwell on this, the more disagreeable we become. Then we tend to judge. The disagreeableness in our own life has caused the majority of suffering inside of us. And it occurs when we choose not to walk along with our adversary, when we choose to decide to stand up and become rigid inside of ourselves. And when we do this, we begin to tear ourselves down, not the other person. The law of God inside of you is agreement. It is perfect harmony. It is love. And when you have this, you're in tune with the rhythm and the harmony of God's universe. When you are disagreeable within yourself, you're out of kilter, out of sync with the rest of God's universe. Because of the thoughts that you hold in your mind, your life may go from bad to worse. Cause and effect may produce a negative chain reaction in your life. Question. Who places us in jail? We place ourselves in jail, not the adversary. We find ourselves in jail and we have temporarily thrown away the keys. But we also have the keys inside of us. And when we decide to become agreeable, we agree with our adversary quickly and we let ourselves out of jail. But we will not be let out until the last penny is paid inside of our consciousness, inside of our thinking, inside of our lower human nature. So first, we agree that not all things that cause us difficulty are bad or wrong. They can lead to spiritual growth. Second, the love of God and God's ways changes things for the better. Disagreeableness always changes things for the worse. I have a question for you. Are you the light of the world? Your light is first what you do within yourself. It shines on every single thing that happens to you and in you. Matthew 5, 33 to 37 says, Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not forswear falsely, but carry out the vows that you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not forswear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is God's footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not forswear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The evil one inside of us is what? It is our lower human thinking that is constantly in error. It misses the mark. It gets us in trouble inside of ourselves and in our life. We should not forswear because we want to keep our future free. Do not build your future by today's thinking. Do not promise your future self by your limited thinking of your today self. Tomorrow will be your thoughts of tomorrow, not today. Now you may say, what is he talking about? I never do that. How in my prayer time do I ever forswear? Well, when we go to God with the feeling that we can't be healed, and we say to God, God, the doctor says I can't be healed. I know I can't be healed, but God, if there's any way, heal me. Well, in our free will, we are for 
swearing our future by today's limited thinking. Yes, maybe we can't fully believe today we can be healed, but I ask you to keep an opening in your spiritual consciousness. Keep even a small bit of faith, even if it's the size of a grain of mustard seed, and say yes to God's miracle. Admit that with God, I can be healed. Something good can happen to me. Be willing to change and be willing to go higher than you have been. Also, do not judge today's judgments on past opinions. You may have forsworn yourself years ago, and you can't be a success at that level of mind. It's a lie. We are the people that have lied to us over time. The number one way that we forswear the future is through worry. And we sometimes worry in our prayer time. I'm turning now to Matthew 13, verse 45. Jesus says this, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Now the kingdom of heaven is where? Is it somewhere out in space? No, it's inside of you, and Jesus said that it was inside of you. The people of old believed that when you climb a mountain, you get closer to God, because God is that old man in the sky. But God is not an old man in the sky. God is everywhere present, surrounding you, and inside of you. In the kingdom of heaven... Now, I'm turning to the Bible, to Matthew 7, verse 6. In Matthew 7, verse 6, it says, Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine. It's talking about the two sides inside of us. We have inside of us both the pearls and the swine. Every one of us has both inside of us. Jesus never called a human being a swine, never. He doesn't call you a swine. He doesn't call you the worm of the dust. What he does do is affirm you. He tells you of your possibilities. This is what God will tell you directly in prayer. The twelve pearls of great price are inside of us. Christ's gifts of empowerment. Theologians have called them faith, love, judgment, imagination, order, zeal, strength, power, understanding, will, elimination, and life. When you use these, you are giving them expression and you're giving them to yourself. The twelve pearls of great price are the fringe benefits in our lifetime. Our lower human mind, sometimes referred to as swine, our animal nature, has benefits too. But they are the cringe benefits of fear, worry, anxiety, ill health, bad relationships, anger, jealousy. In our lower human mind, you can have a reverse spiritual experience. But working with God, you always have a spiritual experience. Go for the fringe benefits of life and cast out those cringe benefits. Giving the pearls wrongly is to let the fine life energy be consumed in the unrefined part of us. The anger, the cheating, the lying parts of the human part of us. And it is that part of us that is constantly unkind to us. It says things to us that are just not true. And it gets us in trouble every time. It makes us feel bad. That is the unrefined cringe part of us. 
This comes out in a person that has to have his or her way all the time. It's unrefined. It's rigid. The cringe part of us that doesn't care about other people's feelings is the unrefined part of us. When we go in prayer to the glories of God, to all the possibilities and cast all this power down the sewers of our mental existence in worry, saying, Dear God, I pray you'll get this person, or Dear God, please change this person. I don't want to change, but change him or her. We're casting our pearls before swine. And in the end, you can only change one person, and that person is you. And it's the reason we're here. It is our purpose. There's another big part of us that casts God power down into the unrefined part. Do you rem remember the movie Star Wars? Well, one time Luke wanted to get the ship out of the mud, and Yoda said to him, So certain are you within you that it can be done. Have we ever gone to God? so certain that it can't be done, that it can't be done. Yes, we have. We have many times. God knows the worth of your pearls. And now, you allow in your prayer time these great pearls of great price to create a new you, a lot of religious people think that the ultimate experience is learning as much as they can about the Bible so that they can argue the Bible. But the advanced soul no longer needs to argue. The advanced soul no longer needs the justification of fellow humans because the advanced soul goes directly to God and justifies him or herself constantly through the reassurance of the presence of God. The advanced person does not need another to do something for them. They have an overwhelming need to do something for others. Prayer is one of your great pearls. Prayer is a time to get into a conscious knowing, a conscious thinking, and a conscious feeling of who you are and what God is. When you do, all things become possible. Because with God, all things are possible. And you become empowered to make a difference. Now I ask you to close with me in prayer. Dear God, this day in this moment, I realize there is a powerful new belief inside of me. I'm going to the heights of my human mind to meet with you, dear God. And I'm going up on the mountaintop, and I am being transfigured. I am not asleep anymore. I am awake to the divine possibilities. I will not remain asleep for one moment in my future days, in my nightmares that I have worried and obsessed about. I will believe in your power, God, and God, I ask you to work through me. There will be a transfiguration in my countenance and in my life. I will be transfigured, and I give thanks in this day for this powerful thinking, this powerful feeling in prayer. Dear God, I pray today, knowing the truth about me and the truth about you, in Jesus Christ's name, amen.